This is the Alton base from Energetic 3D, a combination of two very common 3D printing bed materials in a very uncommon way. It's PEI on glass. But is this the ultimate bed for your 3D printer or just another 3D printing gimmick? Let's find out. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So this print bed was sent to me from Energetic 3D for an unbiased test and apparently it was picked out of random from their early bird production line and you can find more information in the video description. But what makes it really interesting is the fact that it's glass with PEI. If you're in the 3D printing space, you're probably very familiar with PEI print surfaces. They've been used for a very long time, whether it's the film across the surface of the bed or the more recent development of powder coated PEI sheets like the spring steel sheets on the Prusa Mark III. And now various companies are producing their own versions of these sheets with PEI coating because it's a really good durable surface that holds onto the prints really well so they stick to the bed and don't pull away. But the thing about those sheets is they're flexible, which I personally actually like because you can take them off the bed and flex the prints off when they're done. But it means when you have a high warp environment with filaments that want to shrink in on themselves like ABS, polycarbonate and similar, then they can actually sometimes shrink in and pull the sheet with them. And that's where glass comes in because glass is flat and incredibly temperature resistant. You're not gonna get glass up to a temperature where it's gonna even start to deform on a 3D printer. And good glass is completely flat. Although I have heard of bowed pieces of glass as being shipped with 3D printers, glass can be completely flat and it will stay that way, which means in an ideal world, if you want a perfectly flat 3D print with high warp forces, glass might be the best way to go. So this plate, aims to combine the best of both worlds. It has PEI for the high adhesion onto the bed and glass for the high temperature resistance and flatness. And it's a really interesting product. It's really, really rough. The application of PEI, which by the way is a polymer, a very high temperature polymer, is sort of splattered onto it. And it's much rougher than any other print service I've come across, even with powder coated PEI, like the ones on the Prusa Mark III. I don't know how they've manufactured this. Apparently it's quite an expensive process, but either way, it's very innovative, which is why I agreed to a review. I specifically requested this print size, which is 220 by 220 to fit onto my Tronxy D01, which I've heavily modified with a Himera extruder and hot end combo. And it prints really well now, which is again, a bit of a shame that what happened with Tronxy happened. But anyway, I use this printer a lot and it's capable of very high temperature filament extrusion. But unfortunately, I'm not able to test out the peak capability that Energetic 3D says this print service is capable of. However, I was able to test PLA, flexibles, ABS and PTG. And I compared the print service to the one the printer came with, which is this ceramic coated glass which uh, I think originally was developed by Anycubic as an ultra base sort of surface, but since then it's being used by many other manufacturers. It's glass again, so very flat, and has this interesting uh, perforated ceramic coating on it, which sticks parts down when hot and then self-releases when cold. So again, kind of the similar idea to this. It's gonna be interesting to compare the two and see if one's better than the other in my range of material tests. And to test out adhesion capabilities, I designed this little model in Fusion 360 with my logo and these thin edges coming out like a sort of star shape, which is going to be a real test for bed adhesion because it's something that would warp very easily. Thin, long, thin details are what warp the most when using filaments like ABS. So if these warp, on one surface but not the other, we'll know that one has better adhesion than the other and might be a better choice for that certain filament. So we'll start with PLA. PLA makes a fantastic beginner's material because it's easy to print, it doesn't warp or shrink very much, and in some cases, depending on your bed surface, you might not even need to heat it to get good PLA prints. And that's something I did want to try with the PEI coated glass because I know for a fact the ceramic coated glass needs heat for PLA to stick. For all of my print tests, I made sure the nozzle height was absolutely nailed using my feeler gauge trick that I talked about recently in my 3D printing myths and misconceptions video. And I have to say the first layer went down perfectly. But with this surface unheated, the print quickly came away. So that's a bit of a shame. It does seem you need heat to print even PLA on the surface. So I did another test with the temperature at 60 degrees and the print worked beautifully. That rough surface really does translate through to the bottom surface of the print and that textured look might be what you're going for, um, but it's definitely something that would be a personal preference. It's very rough, very recognizable, 
when the rest of the print looks very different to it. I know for a fact that the Ultra Base style ceramic coated glass bed can print PLA when heated, that's fine. But what about just glass on its own? Well, I wanted to try this print bed upside down with just bare glass to see how PLA would go. Again, making sure it's heated to 60 degrees C. And this was the result. Again, no warping at all, stuck perfectly. But this time, because it's just glass, it has a perfectly shiny bottom surface. And personally, I like the bottom glossy surface a bit more than the heavily textured surface, but again, personal preference. Let's move on to something a little bit more challenging. Let's try some flexible filament. This is Polymaker's TPU95 High Flow. It's designed for high speed 3D printing of a sort of semi-flex material. It's not the most flexible TPU you can get in the market, but it's pretty flexible and a good choice to test out flexibles on this print surface. So the first test worked out great. Now I do need to dry this filament and I haven't, so it's a little bit stringy, that's my bad. Um, but otherwise, apart from the slight stringiness from the moisture, it stuck down perfectly. And it was actually a little bit difficult to remove. I find TPUs can be quite finicky. They either sort of just don't stick at all to a print surface or they suction down quite heavily, um, probably because they're slightly flexible nature and can sort of come away suddenly. Um, and this did stick down very well. But then I did again, I tried it on just the clean glass surface with the same, same settings, heated bed, and it worked perfectly again. Even with a perfectly smooth glass surface, if you get the, your first layer height correct with a TPU, I find that again, it sort of suctions down to that glass and can be quite difficult to remove if you have large cross sections. So the benefits here of a PEI coating on the glass so far hasn't really been uh, apparent. <laughs> However, there is one filament that's notorious for causing trouble with the wrong printing surface, and that is ABS. ABS, again, like I said in my recent video, isn't that common anymore, and it's actually not as strong as I used to think, but sometimes you just do need its properties. It's got higher temperature resistance to just regular PLA, and it can be quite tough, and it can be vapor smoothed or chemically welded, and it's cheap. This was like $7 Australian a kilo when I got it. It's very old ABS. But how does it fare when printed on the Altem base? Well, it printed amazingly. I heated it up to 100 degrees C and it stuck down with no warping at all, no brim, nothing onto the surface. And then the most amazing part was when it was cooling down because the manufacturer does say you need to make sure the bed cools down completely, otherwise you risk damaging it because stuff does stick down very hard when it's hot. I could hear it like cracking and creaking and literally pulling away from the surface. And it literally self-released. After a few minutes, the bed had cooled down enough for me to just come in and pick this up off the surface of the PEI coated glass, which is really, really neat. I did then try to print ABS on the smooth glass surface with nothing, just the clean glass, and it didn't stick, it did warp up. So this is a big win for the PEI coated glass concept. I think if you're printing ABS, it might just be the way to go because the parts have no warping at all, no perceived warp, uh, and there's this, it's very thin. Like to print this as is, without a brim, with on just a heated bed, in other, in other words, open, open uh, printer, Pretty impressive. But that's where things took a turn for the worst. This is PTG, a really lovely apple green from Fibrology. It's a really good PTG. I did dry it before printing it, maybe not long enough, but I did print this using recommended PTG settings out of Prusa Slicer, and the print looked great. And then I left it overnight to fully cool down, and I came back to try to get it off the print bed. Well, <laughs> It was stuck down quite hard, uh, it didn't self-release, and then I got a spatula to gently pry it off, and some of the glass came away with it. The print stuck down great, but it stuck down too great. So PTG has a really weird relationship with glass. I don't recommend printing PTG on straight glass, but I thought with the PEI coating that would be like a protective surface so that PETG wouldn't dig into the glass and rip little chunks out of it, which is this really weird behavior it does. But it still somehow got past the PEI and ripped out these chunks of glass from the print surface. 
and took away bits of the PEI with it. And I'm not sure if that's because the surface isn't completely coated in PEI. Maybe each of these globs has a slight gap and there's access to the glass and that's how the PETG got contact with the glass. I'm not exactly sure. Generally, if you want to print PETG, you can print it on just smooth glass with a coating of glue stick or some sort of uh, adhesion and release helping agent uh, because then it's not straight on glass. But regardless, I printed this because their website did say it could print with PETG and it couldn't. So uh, at least with this version, I cannot recommend it for PETG printing one bit. So that takes us back to the ultra base the machine came with because if that can print with PETG and ABS, then I don't really see the benefit. It's not much of a surprise to anyone, but PETG worked great. Uh, I've printed PETG on this machine many times with its stock surface. I've cleaned the bed heaps of times. There might be some residue glue stick, but really it was mostly just clean and the part was stuck down quite well, but then did self-release. What about the true kicker? Can this machine just print ABS with the settings I used on its stock surface? Yeah, it did. Uh, 100 degrees C was like the magic number and it printed just as well as the print on the PEI coated glass. Which leaves us with a difficult conclusion because I really like where Energetic 3D is going with this concept, but I couldn't see any tangible benefit to the surface that the machine came with, the ceramic coated glass. And even in some cases, just bare glass uh, worked just as well because I needed to heat it. Now I have to be clear here, this PEI coating, you can heat PEI up to like over 200 degrees C, it's glass transition temperatures like 220 degrees C or so, which is really high. So this bed could be heated to ridiculous temperatures to try to print materials like PEEK. I do not have the capabilities on any of the machines I own to print in peak. It's just too high temperature, you need, a, you need an actively heated chamber or at least a very well insulated chamber and a bed that can heat up to like 150 degrees Celsius or higher. I can't test that on this. Maybe this print surface is fantastic for it. But in the current setup I could test it on, if you're printing in PLA, ABS or PETG, I couldn't see any real tangible benefit over the ceramic coated glass. Either way though, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. Maybe you love the surface, maybe you wanna try printing with higher materials. I do appreciate the company sending out to me for an unbiased review. And also their pricing is really reasonable. This bed surface at this current size is about $30 US and you can find links below. And if you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Makers Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Thanks for watching guys, bye.